All right, everybody, this is Gary Smith, this is Kaz Kenny, and I'm Eddie Bramwell, and this is episode four of the Blackwater's Edge podcast. So, Kaz, why don't you start us off with this week's fishing report? All right, so let's talk about the fishing going on down here at Blackwater this week. Lots of fish are starting to be caught, a few crappy, a few yellow perch are starting to show up here and there. No numbers, but scattered around. If you look, you'll find a few. Uh, bluegills seem to be schooling up. Um, again, not many numbers, but if you find them, you can get a limit and do what you need to do. Uh, white perch... Uh, few of them around, mostly on a small side, nothing on the really, really big side unless you get down towards the bay. Snakeheads. That's what everybody wants to hear about. I'm oh, sure yeah. snakeheads. All right, so Mike Stewart came down yesterday. We saw that video. He had a good time. He did. He did. Yeah, and, he did. Uh, it was funny because, um, you know, he had reached out to me and wanted to get together, and I said, look, I can hook up with you next Tuesday. I just can't do it. You know, holiday, blah, 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 blah. So long story short, he calls me. He says, hey, man, he says, I'm really struggling, dude. He's like, can you, can you help me out a little bit? I said, he's like, man, I said, Mike. I think I can. I said, sit tight for a minute. So I told him where to go to, and he gets down there, and he texts me back, and he says, man, I'm down here, man. He says, the mud, the mud's out, the water, the tide's low. He says, I, I don't see much here. I said, well, watch the water for a minute. He texts me back and says, yeah, there, there's stuff here. I see a lot of big <laughs> stuff, but it's just moving around. I said, well, I'd stay right where you are. I wouldn't go anywhere. So he texts me back and says, man, I got minnows out. Ain't nothing going on. I said, you got a maps with you, a white maps, man? He goes, yeah, yeah, I got some. I said, well, I like number three or number four. I said, if you got one of them maps, I says, what you want to do is you want to get your treble hook, and you're just going to put one minute on your treble hook, right? This has been a trick of mine I've been using for a couple of years, man. It definitely works in the winter. So uh, he says, okay, three casts. First video comes back to me, Kaz, Kaz. He's got his first <laughs> one. You know? I'm like, this is awesome, you know, just to see the excitement and the, the enthusiasm yeah. he was having. It wasn't but 10 minutes later, and the crazy video hit when he you got that dragon. Oh, my he, he God. He was out yeah. of breath on that That's one. a presentation, man. And yeah. it was funny because <laughs> I hadn't eaten Mike Rose up at Allen's at Church Creek to get his car, to drop him off for his car. And he said, yeah, man, I was coming to the bridge. This guy was holding up a big old dragon, man, <laughs> taking pictures of it on his stringer, man. He was, like, caught in the moment. You could just tell, you know. <laughs> so uh, Mike got his personal best yesterday. Uh, I think it weighed out something 11-something 11, something up at Coys. Is that what it was? Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I mean, it's, I always tell people, you know, check a couple different scales because just because one scale says something doesn't mean another scale ain't going to say something. And make sure if you are using a scale, make sure you got a certified scale. So, you know, we, we had a little bit of a cold snap. We saw it getting a little warmer. Phone started ringing. Should I come? Should I come? Look, if you get two warm days here at Blackwater, come all winter long. Um, yeah, don't wait for the third one. Yeah. Come on the second one. Yeah, that's it. You know what I mean? I mean, it, come it, before it goes that right down. fast, that yeah. fast, you know? So I told Mike, I said, Mike, stay where you are. I said, that mud sticking out the water. It's been being beat with the sun all day. I said, so as that water starts to come back up over that hot mud, that's it. It's going to jump at least eight to 10 degrees. And, and we talked about that with yeah. one yeah, winter. Winter. Well, a couple yep. times. Mm-hmm. We talked about yeah. it already, you know? Yeah. So and, uh, that's so a perfect he, example of it. Yeah. So he waited it out and bam, there it was. Uh, I think. Greg Nally went today over there. Yeah. He got a rockfish, you said. Is yeah. that what he got? Good mm-hmm. job, Greg. It's in uh, those snakes, but he called nice. Why is he going tomorrow? So, <laughs> yeah, so he's got one more chance tomorrow. Yeah. So, Greg, look, man, I'm going to send you a little, little help tonight, help you out. Uh, so as far as snakeheads go, I mean, what I'm hearing around the bridges is it's all, you know, tides moving. Mm-hmm. You're catching them. Um, slack tide, you're still getting a few. Pay attention to the water temperature. You know, if you're at a place and you just touch it and it feels really cold, you know, maybe just think about Taking a little ride somewhere That's and look it. around. There are so many little nooks and crannies here that guys just ain't even seeing. They drive right by it ten times as they're running back and forth to their bridges. You know what I mean? Stop mm-hmm. and investigate, guys. If it looks like it might have some fish and it's small and it's skinny and the sun's been out for yep. sun's two shining days, on it. Look, them ditches get just as hot That's it. as the main river. And let me tell you what, those ditches after two days in December or January, a little frog, a little mouse. A little top water, you'd be amazed that you're catching stuff on top water yeah. in them months of the year. You know? Just make Especially sure you can fish mice. there. Just make right, sure you can right. fish there. Again, back to yeah. the legal thing. Make sure, make sure you... Especially with mice. How many times do you see mice run, running over the snow? Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. Absolutely right. I, I think they just get, in, like I said, that water warms up and they just get hungry. It doesn't yeah. matter, man. There, there's the feeding frenzy, you know. So as far as snakehead goes, live bait seems to be doing the trick, which is always through the winter time. Again, the MEP spinners, which we've got here at the Wolfer store in stock, Absolutely. ready to go, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
small chatter baits. Remember, like I said, downsize your baits. All these guys that I'm talking to, they're struggling. As soon as I tell them, hey, man. Slow your stuff down. Yeah, get a three-inch twister tail. Just try something you've never tried before that you can work a little slower. I got this lure called a timber doodle. It's an old spoon that has a three, <laughs> three-legged three uh, crawler tail that goes on. Let me tell you what, that little spoon, it floats just like this through the water, you know, real slow. And you can fish it fast, you can fish it slow. It's called a timber doodle. I don't know if you can buy them in the stores anymore, but you might be able to find some online, you know, somewhere like uh, eBay or something. That's where I get most of mine from. So that that's where we kind of are with the fishing. It's live bait, a few select lures, that kind of thing. Persistency, stay in put, stick and move, you know, not the best time of the year to do that. You know, if you've got an area, like I said, and it's shallow water, the mud's been exposed, tide's coming back in, get your hiney over there, man. That's it. So you guys coming yeah. down sick of hunting this weekend. Yeah, I'm bring definitely going to too. Yep, yep, yep. Bring your rods, too, because – when you're out of that stand, boy, this can be some good fishing. Because it's, I'm itching, it's I'm not itching. supposed to be too cold this weekend, is it? No. Uh-uh. So. so this weekend, so uh, guys were asking me if they were going to make the trip. You know what? What I thought the good days would be this week. So looking at the weather here, I mean, we're going to see 57 degrees today. So uh, so tomorrow we should have a good bite again. It's going to be windy. Find yourself a place out of the wind. You should be able to find the fish. Friday we're 45, 42 on Saturday, 45 on Sunday with rain. So keep in mind that rain's going to fall at 45 degree air temperature so if we're up in the 50s or 57 after this sun tomorrow it's going to drop back and the fish are going to shut down mm-hmm. so just uh pay attention to the sun pay attention to temperature and let's get on with deer hunting that's it so we're talking about sick deer today yep we got rifle season coming in on uh saturday <laughs> my favorite mm-hmm. season so well if you're on blackwater it's shotgun season so right no well, rifles not on till, not till uh that's not till, yeah that's the uh the that's quota the day quota day correct so yep rifle season coming in saturday so what we're going to talk about today is mostly on public land, right? That, mm-hmm. That's where we're shooting, mostly on the blackwater hunting. Uh, is sick of deer. So how, how, you, how you target these guys, do's and don'ts while you're hunting on blackwater. Um, basically just all around best practices. And and, and just just so we get get this out of the way early, we're not affiliated with, with Blackwater Refuge in any way. So no. if, if if we're incorrect, please let us know on this. But this is, this is pretty much what we... What, we, we, what we've learned over the years through, through hunting on Blackwater. Right. We're not biologists. No. <laughs> we're not guides. We're doing our best to, to prevent right. the spread of it's misinformation. Just... But we're also doing our best to right. help raise awareness and get right. people here active in the Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge and right. make some money here. You know what and I mean? A lot, a lot of what we're talking about is, is personal experience right. and, and opinion. Right. Yeah, which 90% of hunting <laughs> is. <laughs> Maybe a little more than 90%. Not fishing, though. So, Gary, what, what's the number one complaint you hear from hunters? People uh, coming in late. <laughs> yeah, when, you, when you come in, if you're going to be late, be courteous. Yeah, as much Just as possible. Go in shallow and don't go don't go all the way to the back if, you, if you're hunting like Blackwater. A lot of their trails are some of them are miles on. Don't go in yeah, don't go a mile and a half. You're when, walking when you're by everybody in. that's hunting. Go in shallow and go in a short distance. That's it's it. just as common courtesy. You know, I said earlier today. I hear a lot of hunters complain about being getting in their stand early. They've got it already stand already picked out and hung, and then somebody comes in late and screws it up, or somebody comes in with a flashlight and shines it, mm. you know, and they shine on them, and then they go a hundred yards from them and go on up with a climber. But in the same, I never hear anybody saying that they were going to their stand. And there's a guy set up in a climber 100 yards by him and, and say, well, I didn't hunt there because I didn't want to mess him up. I'll go somewhere right. else. That stand's not yours. It's just a privilege you're That's allowed exactly to, right. to hang it there. If you get there and somebody's hunting in your stand, go somewhere else. You can yeah. argue with him all you want, but he's allowed to be there. And that, now, just to make sure people realize that, like, you're, you're not allowed to leave stands in Blackwater year-round. So what, what's the date you can, you're allowed to bring them in? Uh, it's usually the, the scouting days. Uh, before September fifteenth, she's like twelfth, right. thirteenth, somewhere in there. So you're, so you're allowed. Days. You're allowed to come into Blackwater, hang your stands. You must leave your name and the year the year that you're hunting, the the season year that you're hunting for the deer, uh, on a tag or a label or something on the stand. Um, when you hang that stand, what's the regulations for that? So what about what about your Blackwater number? Do you have to have that on there? No, no, no we, we just looked that up just to make sure. Right. We, did, we, we both thought you did, but you don't. It's just the name and the year you're hunting. So. Nothing invasive to the tree. If right. you if you put a uh, Hang on stand. You can use ladder sticks to strap on, but you cannot use the screw in. Nothing's, uh, no, nothing's going to damage the tree. Right, nothing's so going to damage the tree. You can't screw into the tree. You can't uh, 
uh, nail into the tree. You can't do anything to it to a permanently attach it to the tree right. and there's no you can't cut limbs off trees either right so you're not supposed to cut any trees down you're not supposed to cut I was any limbs. Ask you that yeah there's no you cannot mm. physically hurt, hurt mm. that tree can't cut yeah if there's you, if no you ain't got a lane like, you can't cut one no, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, so that, that's a big thing on hunting on public land you, you can't do anything to, to damage those trees when you're hanging your stands right. and that's part of the reason for taking them down so the straps don't pinch the trees and exactly you know, so. disfigure them and, and cut their circulation or if you don't want to worry about all those regulations and you don't want to worry about someone climbing up in the stand that you've set you've per- perfected found the perfect spot just take a climber just take a climber in and out with you every time then you don't have to worry about it so um as far as getting to your stands or traveling inside blackwater what are, what are the rules on that so if no quad, you can't take your right, quad. Can't no, take, no motorized vehicles. At the beginning of this year, you were only allowed to take a pedal bicycle. Mm-hmm. There's a federal law <clears throat> for federal parks that says that you can use e-bikes anywhere that you can use bicycles. So Blackwater it changed the stands on it, but it's only temporary because if for whatever reason the e-bikes mess up the trails, then they're going to discontinue again, yeah. but for now it's on a trial basis so you can use an e-bike does, trails only does you can't it, right. drive it in the woods and does it and, 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 and that, now you guys know me i'm not i'm not very seasoned hunter like a lot of you guys are so the e-bike i mean is is it are you saying that because there's like more tor- torque on them things no, is that what they're heavier about? bigger tire oh, heavier. Okay. you know a lot of them are, are the fat tire bikes okay. and just because if you get in a muddy spot and you start spinning the wheels, uh, okay. don't do it. Because okay. yeah, exactly. you're screwing it up for yourself okay. as well as everybody, everybody else. else so. but, and, and also, th- there's a classification on e-bikes, and I don't know exactly what it is, but they're not supposed to go over 30 miles an hour. And if you have one that has a throttle on it, you are not allowed to use the throttle. It is pedal assist only. Right. If you 30 mile an hour, you can run a deer down the trail. So if, 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 guy sees you, <laughs> if the guy sees you going down the trail and you're moving and you're not pedaling, you're probably going to get a ticket. Right. So the, that that's some important important distinction. Yeah. So uh, you don't want to get a ticket for that for them for a dumb reason. You just no no uh, rules. I've got an e bike and I love it, man. <laughs> I, was, I was I was really disappointed because we just bought them last year to be able to use them this year and then we couldn't. But now we can. I'm I'm happy. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> so we went over this a little bit earlier, but there's no rifles in Blackwater. So no rifles. when when it's gun season, it's shotgun only or muzzleloader. But right. that's a separate season. So shotgun only when you're hunting. And then there's also there's different seasons from, from the actual state season. So like we said, Saturday, um, rifle season comes in for the, for the state or, or region B. I'm not sure if it is for region A as well. Cause they got the different regions. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, but it's, so it, but that's not gun season's not open for Blackwater. Actually, Blackwater hunting is closed until the quota day, which is Monday. Monday. Mm-hmm. Right. And they closed the bow this week as well. Right, so so bow season's been over in Blackwater since twenty second. Twenty second, yeah, I think that sounds right. Um, to get let everybody get prepared for for the gun season, and then Sunday the first is the Scout Day, yep. which uh, which is you're allowed to come in Scout and and glad to have. And I would highly recommend that if you if you don't know where you're going, Scout, and you haven't been there this year, but you know where you're going, take a look. Some guys I will put a stand up right in your That's favorite exactly. spot you go to every year, and nobody's <laughs> ever been to it before. Yeah. So, so, and, and, and just to clarify, you do have to get your permits from Blackwater for these, <clears throat> excuse me, for these quota days ahead of time. Yep, it's all online. It's now. all, you have to go to Blackwater's website and you, and you buy, buy your stamps for your quota days. And that's separate from the normal, uh, gun season that comes in, uh, six or seventh. It's the following weekend. I think. Right. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. So I'm just not to interrupt there, but I'm pulling up firearms for the, we're talking about the state. So it says here, firearms open. If I'm reading this right, white-tail deer antlered firearms start 11:30 2019 right, to 14. So I believe that is for us, and then that's for, that's for private land and and uh, state and state land. But that's not that Blackwater is excluded from that. Right now, Blackwater has its own regulations. You said something about A, so I don't know how to read that. Yeah, it's it's because there's different regions. So I think the season comes in the same time for, a for both regions. A, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the the way that's it's set up for deer season is you have region A and region B. Um, and there's different regulations for the different regions, but I think the gun season is statewide. Okay. So, um, and one big thing, I don't know if a lot of people realize this or not, no Sunday hunting inside Blackwater. Doesn't matter what season right. it is, there's no Sunday hunting inside of the refuge. Just because you can in Dorchester, you doesn't mean you can in Blackwater. Right, exactly. So yeah. each each county has their own Sunday regulations. If you go into the, uh, I forget what page it is in, in, in the uh, regulations book, but they have 
uh, the whole calendar on there, and they have a list of each county's Sunday days for each weapon. It's it's very well laid out, but they're inside of the refuge, there is no mm-hmm. Sunday hunting whatsoever. Right, and it's the same way with um, the bag limits. Right. And the bag limits change in Blackwater. And, and, and also, hunting on federal land doesn't go towards your state quota. That right. was the next question so I was going to ask. So you're, you're allowed, there. technically, you could shoot your three in, in rifle season in, in on Maryland land or private land, right. and then go in Blackwater and do the same thing. If you do more. Good luck for you. Exactly. <laughs> That's a lot of meat. Yeah. You know, I never knew that a good last year. year. I, I, I was not aware that yep. those deer didn't count on your state bag. Exactly And, and right. for years, I've been hunting under the pre- pretense that, you know, if I kill them there, I kill them here, it all counts for the same thing. You know yeah, if I mean? you do all that, then just stop and go snakehead. That's, right. That's, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> so, uh, Gary, what, what are the rules for the time limits for when you're scouting? Uh, <clears throat> 7 o'clock in the morning until... What's it? Sunset. Sunset. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've got different than hunting. Yeah, it's Hunting's different. a lot earlier and a lot later. But, right. But scouting is 7 a.m. to. So this Sunday, the 1st, you can scout in Blackwater from 7 a.m. until sunset to get all your stuff straight for, for the hunt mm-hmm. on Monday and then the upcoming hunts as well. And then when you're actually hunting on Monday, the uh, second, if you're in the quota, um, you can go in at 4 a.m. and you're allowed to be in there till what? <clears throat> 9, a, 9, 9 p.m. PM. Right, and if you're going to be, if for some reason you're looking for a, a deer, can't find it, there's an 800 number you, you can call, and you'll most likely get a recording, but I would definitely have that recording. Absolutely. Uh, let, let if them you, know. you don't want to get called in there after 9 o'clock. No, absolutely And they do not. check. No, they, they're riding around checking all the time. So, so, some of the entrances have, like, dingers on them. You go through it, mm-hmm. sends a ding, they know mm-hmm. somebody's in there, you know what I mean? So keep that in mind, too. Um, so as far as when you're actually hunting, what are some some of the rules as far as uh, baiting or things like that? No bait, no cameras. Right. So that, and that, and that's what's so important. To scout. You know, you can you can set cameras up in private woods, or, and you can do it on the state, but you're probably going to lose them. <laughs> you can try. It. Yeah, you better have a big inventory. <laughs> but but you can you can find deer and follow it, see where they're going, see which direction they come from. Scouting and as and. and, and any land it shows you so much more. You Absolutely. can see where the fresh steps are, where the new trails are, and you can. And we, we talked about this this afternoon. You can find the best place that you've ever seen for deer hunting in your life. And if there's no tracks, no trails, no runs around that, it's and around. 200 yards from it, there's there's the all kinds of running. The worst spot that you would think nothing would ever go through. The only deer you're going to see in that great spot is the deer that the guy misses <laughs> when he shoots from 200 yards away from you at the deer running down the trails. I tell a lot of, a lot of my friends when they come to visit, because they'll ask me, you know, hey, where should I go? What should I do? What should I look for? And, and like I said, I'm not I'm not a deer expert, you know what I mean? But I think one of the biggest things I've learned with these sick of deer, you find yourself a trail mowed through some frag, or you find yourself a trail mowed through some wet marsh, it's a pretty good chance something's going to come down that trail. Mm-hmm. And, and you, if you, you can stay tell in that spot used. for a whole day and don't leave and just hunker down and you stay there, mm-hmm. you're going to get your chance. Might be a hind, but, hey, you're still going right. to get your chance. And, and another thing, they don't – they they travel these trails, and they're very – you know, I mean, they're, they're rigorous. They they're go to the same place all the time. They're, but they don't go from point A to point B in the morning and then come back right. that way in the evening. They – basically do a loop somewhere yeah, around it it might be it's a much, all different ways but they do come back to pattern. that spot it's it's a much different traveling pattern than, than yeah. what whitetail are used to. so with whitetail you know that they ha- they can take uh different paths depending on what the wind's doing or what they're feeling or what they're chasing sick deer are much more um they'll go from here to here and then loop back to here and then come back and but but they always come back to the same place in a different it's it's a different kind of cycle than it is for whitetail. Yeah. What I find whitetail usually <clears throat> will have the winds blowing from the north or from the south. They have different bedding areas, and they might even have uh, another one somewhere. But it's not usually a whole bunch of bedding areas. Right. Sick of deer walk until they're tired and they lay down. And it could be nine o'clock in the morning. It could be three o'clock in the afternoon. They get up and start walking again and eating and sit down again. Well, that, and when they're baited, it's a whole lot different. Right, it's a but, whole different schedule. But but on on Public blackwater family. especially. Where, where there's no baiting allowed, they forage all day. Mm-hmm. Especially at, at nighttime, too. They're very nocturnal creatures. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it's funny. A lot of these guys, I mean, they don't realize that if you catch them in the morning, uh, during the morning hunt, they're actually going to lay down because they're up all night because they, mm-hmm. know, they know that's a safe time for them to be out. So, uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's why the scout days are so important, like you were saying. 
you're not allowed cameras, you're not allowed baiting. It's a lot harder yeah. to really get a, a handle on what these deer are, are doing on public land. Yeah. So it's it's hard for you to get a handle on deer, right? the private or public land. <laughs> yeah, I mean, morning, morning or night. <laughs> well, for me, yeah. I mean, I, I usually go in the morning, I usually hunt and eat, and usually I see most of my deer. I don't know. I mean, for me, I mean, it doesn't seem to be one more than the other where I hunt at. I mean, I'm, I'm my, my favorite place to hunt so hunker way deep in these woods, so I yeah. usually see them in the morning, usually see them in the evening. Now, whether or not I got a shot, that's the question. If I get a shot, the next question is, did I hit or not? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the next question after that is, what the hell did I do wrong? You know what I mean? <laughs> that's how hunting goes for me. Yeah. I get so nervous and shook in that tree, I don't care if it's a little tiny pocket deer, pocket sickle, you know what I mean? I still get just as excited over that as I do anything coming in with horns on it. Well, so, you yeah. should be. If you're not getting excited when you see yeah, a deer, it, you it don't be out. If it didn't fun. I mean, this is the thing. Like we were talking about the other day, a guy saying to me, he said, "Man, he said, you, you hunt deer a lot." I said, "Well, I hunt deer a lot. I don't kill a lot." He goes, <laughs> well, well, what, "What drives you to go?" I mean, really, what drives me to go is when I'm sitting out there and that's it. And there's an owl in the tree across from me, and all he can see is my eyes, and he's looking at me like this, wondering what the heck is that thing blinking at me? And then out of nowhere, that summer gun comes and puts his talons out in front of your face, and you got to go like this, and he goes to back pedal, and he falls on the ground, you're like, "Holy moly, man!" That's the kind of stuff I like to see yeah. when I'm hunting. Yep, you know? sun up and sundown. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I, 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 I like morning and I like evening. And really, not one more than the other. Except evening's a little more. You're already up. You don't right. have to it's get more, up. A little more convenient. But but I like to go in early, and reason being, is they're like you said they're moving around. Give them time to settle down. I, I prefer morning hunts, but more often than not, I'm usually going evenings because I'm stuck <laughs> yeah. in the store in the yeah. morning. So right. if, if I even get to get out, it's it's rare for me to even get out I can out tell anymore. you Saturday I'm going to be in there dark 30 for sure. Yeah. I don't know about any day after that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Might it's, be 12 or 1. I, I get up fairly there, early anyway, but it, but uh, it's hard for some people to get up in the morning. Oh, that's yeah. why you get late. That's exactly yeah, right. And while we're talking about late, one other thing. You can't, I mean, there's no law that says you can't. It's just a courtesy thing. I know he's getting raised that. You can't stalk and walk. <laughs> no. Walk and stalk, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Just it, just, it doesn't work in Phragmitis, no. and, it, and it doesn't work. There are some places if it's flooded timber, and you happen to know that no one else is there. That's it. It, it can really be fun, but it's not courteous, but, and it just doesn't work well in public land. There, there are dr- uh, drive days that, that a lot of people take use on blackwater uh but it's it's when you're in certain areas that that aren't known for driving don't right. don't try right. i was down Mardella two years ago and you talking about the spot and stalk thing guy you know i'm sitting up there and this guy i'm i got i don't know how he didn't see me i'm orange i mean i'm orange as can be this guy walked past me three or four or five times and finally says hey pal what are you doing he goes oh man i'm sorry i was spotting stalking I said, well, what did you spot? Because I've seen you go by three times. I ain't spotted nothing. (laughs) You know? I I had that last year, muzzle loader. I'm I'm sitting in the tree. This guy, and he saw me. He kind of nodded when he went by. He went 300 yards past me. Everything had just settled down. Here he comes back. You know? And it's that's public hunting. No, if you no. can't if you can't deal with that, don't get me wrong. Right. Stalk stalk hunting is fun. It's a it's a whole different animal that, yeah. than than anything else you, you do. But on public land, it's 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 just common courtesy. I mean, just don't. I mean, somebody's place got a hundred people in there hunting. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, if, I mean if you want to stalk and hunt, wait till late season. Right. Exactly. Come in on Tuesday, about nine o'clock in the morning when you pull up in the parking lot. And there's no other cars there. Right. Stalk do your heart. Good yeah, do yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's the time stalk to do it on your heart. Exactly. But, but don't a, do it when Saturday, you see other cars in the parking lot. And, the, the woods are full. Every stand is full. The parking lot's full. That's yeah. not the day to go stalk hunting. Right. That's that's just common courtesy. You, use your head, folks. So, <clears throat> what are some other tips you can give for, for the public land hunter? I'd just learn the signs to look for. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I'm I'm not going to give you areas because. Blackwater owns enough land yeah. themselves, not counting for Chesapeake Woods, who owns thousands and thousands of acres, and half of theirs is public. The other half, they, they lease out. And if you're looking for a lease, that's another option. Mm-hmm. You can go look up Chesapeake Forest Lands. And, uh, but learn the sign. Sick of deer aren't whitetail. You don't want to hunt them like whitetail, except with a gun or a rifle. That's it. <laughs> or a bow. Besides that, it's it's totally different hunting. For me, it is. And some people might, might disagree with that, but... Their their habit, habitat is different. How how they just move around is different. You know what amazes me is this. I make videos all the time on the side of the road with me talking to sick of deer and 
walking up to him within a foot or two, just talking to him. And people say to me, I mean, I'm sick of deer. They're really dumb, aren't they? No, they're Let not. Let me tell you what. Mm-hmm. They're not. They are no, smart as can be. You curious. know what I'm saying? They're very yeah, they're curious. curious. That's the thing. They ain't stupid. This no. hunting gets going. Ain't nothing coming up to me letting me take pictures on the side of the exactly road. I can right. tell you that. Not until this show is over and done with and we're back in March or right. April. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah, once, once the first gun goes off. They're shut down. Yeah. They're, and, they're, they're curious. Are, I mean, you, you know, watch that, your cards here. Watch your cards here. You got deer during the day right now. See, they start lip, ripping these guns out. It's, it's I was, all night. You know, I was on much. private two weeks ago. Buddy mine and winds blowing out of the north and it's blowing right his his you had his five year old son with him winds blowing right into their face. Or excuse me, right from them out into the field. And they got up and were getting ready to come down to the stand and go and go on out. And he said, Hope, set it back down. And and a stag, six point stag came across the road, ran right across the field directly to them with the wind from them blowing right in his face, walked right in and he got a shot. But that don't happen much. No, right. that's, right. it's never happened to me. <laughs> me neither. I'll tell you what, I, I remember one time last year this and like I, like people told me about the sense of deer and things like that. And I I mean I've sat it before and seen it like where I'm watching deer coming and the wind's ripping behind me and all of a sudden it's that magic spot. You pick that head up. Yeah. And, and you're ta- and I'm talking hundreds of yards out there. I'm not mm-hmm. talking about yeah. 50 or 100 yards. I'm talking two, 300 yards. And I just watch him stop. Look right your direction. And it's like, uh-huh. Oh, and he's going he's gonna to walk around. Yep. 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 And you never Take see him Take a couple again. steps back. This Where'd he go? He's gone. Yep. And then if I'm lucky, I might see him come out down here somewhere later in dark. I'm yeah, like, I'd right. rather see a 10 mile an hour breeze than, than like a mile or two. Right. That, that this just lingers your sense just lingers there. Yep. Yeah, if, if that sense just lingering, but that, that I think it's supposed it, to be pretty windy on Saturday, I think. It's supposed to be blowing a little bit, yeah. That's yeah. probably uh, I think about twenty miles an hour yeah. when I was looking. Excuse me, you're talking about tips. Mm-hmm. That that's a big tip. If you find a place that looks really good to you, look at the weather before you go, then you know what it's gonna be doing yep. on the day that you're gonna be hunting the next day or, or so, like, if you're going Sunday scouting, look at what the weather's going to do Monday and what the wind's going to be blowing. Take a compass That's with a you, and when you find your spot, get set up so when the wind's blowing, it's not blowing across that trail yep. or that run. It, it, that's very – I mean – I, I know people know that, that deer have good noses, and that's how they they survive. Yeah. But I can't stress enough how much scent control matters for, for, yeah. for these animals. It's I so, mean, so here, here, here's a lesson I learned last year talking <laughs> about scent control. It made me think about this. So we're all sitting in the truck, right? And my cousin looks at me and says, what, you, got, you got cologne on or something? I said, no, why? He goes, he leans in and smells my cam. And he goes, I smell dirt and laundry detergent. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He said, I smell them wafers that you use, but then I smell like something else. And then he turned around. Now, listen. This is how stupid I was. I took my clothes when I came in and put them in a trash bag, not realizing the trash bags I was Sunny putting trash. in were Free Breeze-flavored mm-hmm. trash bags, yeah. right? Yep. Oh, man. My, 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 that day was a disaster for me. I can tell you that right now. That's I watched it, it four times. Bing, bing. I mean, you could smell me like nothing, yeah. you know? So. <laughs> well, and we were talking about this today. You know, there's 10,000 scent control oh, yeah. things on the market. You got the soaps and, and the Right, and, 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 and the wipes and the whole nine oh, yeah. yards. And, I, and I've only seen this a couple times. Something that nobody ever talks about. You got a cell phone. You use it every day. You handle it. Your dog's with you. Your kids are around you. You ate dinner. You're eating dinner. You're talking on the phone. Everybody mm-hmm. in a restaurant mm-hmm. does it. So it's, you know, it's got to happen. Scent just lingers on it. Plus, most of them have a case on them. You yep. know what happens to all that the, stuff. The, the dust rubber and cases and pull, absorbs pull the cover off and look at all the dust behind mm-hmm. it. All that dust has got bacteria and scent on it. You got a belt on. If you wear the same belt to work that you wear there, and you got a wallet. Wallet's a big one. July 1st next year, take your wallet out at 12 <laughs> o'clock and smell it. Just open it up and take you a whiff You just made me think of a really, really good idea. You still got them sicker bombs? I still, oh, yeah. Yep. So of all you need is a plastic bag. Throw your wallet in there. Throw your phone in there. Yep. Drop well, one sicker bombs in there and close the bag. I'm not doing that. Because <laughs> <laughs> then when you go to work, you're going to have the same That's drop. Right. <laughs> in then reverse. you're going to sell But, <laughs> but, but there's, there's so many things that pick up scent that people, people don't look mm-hmm. at. You know, you can wash your clothes and, and wash yourself and do all that. But, you know, something as small as your wallet. It's, you know, it's like I said today. If you yep. fart, you can't even see it. But you can run people out of a room. <laughs> <laughs> that was 
<laughs> oh, but, man. Uh, I mean, uh, right? Uh, it's the same way with, your, with your wallet. That your, wallet. Your, your wallet's right there with yeah, you all I mean, the time. You're, you're, you're yeah. around. If you're outside working in New York and you're sweating, it's just absorbing all mm-hmm. that smell That's all year point. long. Probably uh, of anything that you have on your wallet probably smells more than any, that in your belt. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about it. How long, how long do you keep your wallet? Ooh, I just got rid of one. I'll uh, be married 24 years in a couple of weeks, and I bought it when we were married 10 years. We went to Italy, and I bought so it there, and I just got rid of it years. about three or four months ago. I bought one six so. months ago, and I still have yet to transfer the shit, <laughs> yeah. so I've been too busy. So, uh, but yeah, so, it's, yeah it's, long time, 10, 12 years. It's, it's funny. I mean, it's, little things matter when it, when it comes to hunting. Every, mm-hmm. every little detail, it, it, it makes a difference in how successful you're yeah. going to be. You know what hunting. kills me? Though, like These guys talk about smoking, this and that, and everything. Well, it's, funny, it's funny you say that before you get into it, because I've seen – like. I mean, we say every detail matters. Then you hear stories about these guys. Right. I mean, they're going out, blue jeans, the jeans they just wore out to work Big. that day, smoking Big. a cigarette, yeah. change their clothes, yeah. and they're going to shoot that six point sicker or that ten point white tail. But I don't, I don't think cigarettes, for whatever reason, it's like a thermoso. It smokes, right? And it's burning. And it's not natural in the woods, but they they don't seem to pay as much attention to it. I had, guy, I had a guy. I had a guy two stuff. weeks ago. I was talking to. I was like. I was like, you ain't even got camo on? He goes, nah, man. He said, I just climb up in my stand and sit there, man. He said, I just finished smoking a cigarette when that big boy came in there. It mm-hmm. happens, man. But it's, it's get out of here, man. I, I don't yeah. understand, but I mean, it. <laughs> I can't explain it, but it happens. And, well, that's, and you know, another that's thing the, too. That's uh, how many how many went by that you know that's just a small percentage. Right, I always figure. Right. How, how many went around the other way? Exactly. Let me ask this question. Paying attention because because I've heard this come up a lot of times at hunting camps. What about if you have to pee? What do you do? Do you pee in a bottle, or do you get down and pee, or do you pee right off your stand into the water? I, I mean, pee in what a do bottle. You do? Yeah. I, mean, that's... I just I just saw a thing on the internet uh, a couple of weeks ago. It was the five greatest deer hunting myths, and that was like number two. Urine goes to turns to ammonia in twenty minutes so when, me, when it's you. not exposed. It's, it said, you know, you gotta let it go. Let me tell you so what you I did. Write last your name year. on the ground from twenty feet in the air. <laughs> this guy told me, he said, yeah, man. He's like, don't don't pee anywhere. And you say, yeah, don't, don't. Do don't do any of this, man. I said, okay, now, now I'm, I'm going to tell you because I, this is a lesson that right. I learned, okay, right? So, um, <clears throat> so I would pee in a bottle and I hide it. So one day, no lie, I had to go so bad I couldn't get to the bottle. I was trying to sit still. I had a deer over here. It finally got out of the way. I didn't have time to reach the bottle. I had to get over the rail and go. <laughs> so I go over here. I'm going. It's all over my ladder and everything. I sit back down. It's a true story. I'm sitting there and out of nowhere, man, I hear something. I hear the leaves crunch. I lean over and look down the stand. There's a little deer sitting there licking the pee off the bottom rung of the ladder. A little, a, a small one, like a yearling. Right. It wasn't a big one. Was, they just didn't know any better. Right. So, 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 you, th- shoot, now, this, so this, you shoot the deer. No, I didn't. And, no, I didn't. and you're not waiting for to see if the deer dies. You're waiting for the ladder to dry. So you <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, here's the other thing I did last year. So I found a product last year. I think it was called Grave Digger or something like that. It was like something. Yeah. It was like urine, urine and dirt in a bottle, right? So this is what I did. I found a little scrape, and I threw that stuff in there, and I took a pee on top of it. That fuck come at 4 o'clock, he was pissed. <laughs> well, that's what this guy you says. It pees pee. You know. I was talking to a guy down down the island, the guides down there. He told me it pees right next to his stand all the time, so mm. they know what he smells like. I, said, hmm. I don't know. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I hear this. I yeah. hear that. I mean, and, I, and I'm not as seasoned as you guys, you know, so... <laughs> So uh, I'm the guy. I'm the guy that's sitting over here thinking the questions while you guys are talking. That probably the average guy out there is thinking well, about. See, you know what I mean? For me, I'm very particular about it. So I, I always well see, but it's, it comes down to the same thing. I mean, what, what's absorbing the smells? What's worse, the the bottle that you're peeing into, or, or peeing off the side of your deer stand? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, it, but but for me, I, I'll pee into a bottle before I pee outside. The stand. That's what I do. I mean, I, I'm just I'm just that much of a, of a scent control freak. That's that's just my personal opinion on it. But like you said, I mean, if it turns to ammonia in 20 minutes, I didn't realize it turned to ammonia in 20 minutes. That's what this guy said. So said I, I, don't, I, don't know the, I don't know the factual basis. I've, been I've heard a lot of people say that. I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that quick. I'll send you the link if I can find it. Yeah. And but but I'm just, for me personally, I'm very particular, especially about scents. I mean, it's all about the scent game. For all me. them guys but, I run with the same way, man. Scent bags, you know, sealed yeah, bags. I, I, I keep, it's, it just, everything you do matters increases your chances mm-hmm. that, that's I mean, and, and another thing we didn't talk about this but what about your breath man you got the mm. night before and you have a garlic pizza i was gonna i was gonna bring you that know? up next yeah. and if, if you're a mouth breather mm-hmm. your breath's important you know and if you brush your 
your teeth with Pepsi in it, you're going to smell like peppermint when you're out there. If you're fond of deer that likes peppermint, maybe so. No, but, but I always do. you sit there a couple hours, you probably don't I smell like peppermint anymore. I just take a couple nips anymore. off the deer urine bottle, spit out. I mean, I'm good to yeah, go just for take four or five spray hours. Your Listerine. Just, yeah, <laughs> take that spray and just hit yourself once. Uh, <laughs> Everyone does it. They said to me, they said, what are you doing? I said, man, my breast kicking. They were like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> so next time you go hunting, I want to film for you. <laughs> oh, let me tell you what. These guys said that... Uh, they just shake their head all day long. They, they look at me as a respectable fisherman. They don't look at me as a respectable hunter. Not that I'm like an illegal hunter. I don't mean it like that. But they look at me like, oh, my God. Come here. Let me, let me talk to you. It would be, it would be funny to that, get a little man. bottle of mouth spray and pull one of the sickest spray things off and stick it on her. I did. I did. I literally, oh, I literally put, poured deer urine in my hand and wiped it on my beard like this and put it on my mustache like this. Huh. And my buddies were like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and j- just to be a prick, I went like, <laughs> so. so how do you feel about the sense? So, sense work for you or? Yeah, I, I, I think so. And, I, and I'll tell you something else. I have a hex suit and, and I'm not a, a product guy, but I think they're the only ones that I know that makes one. Mm-hmm. What is that? And hex makes a suit. Basically the technology is the same thing. that's in a microwave glass door. It's so like the microwaves don't come through oh, okay. it. It's, it's, okay. a, it's a okay. weave cone gotcha. inside of it that stops your natural electrical scent. Now, is this, like, is this like the charcoal stuff field. I was reading about? I was reading something about it's some not, charcoal. It's not charcoal. Okay. It has nothing to do okay. with scent. It has okay. to do with your electrical impulse that your body okay. puts off. So when an animal, a lot of animals are, are able to read that. And this hex clothing prevents that. And and they have, they have a show on TV, and I, I've never had some of the experiences I have, but... I've had been busted a gazillion times by turkeys. And when I've got my hex suit on, if I sit still, they can, I've had 25 of them right under my stand, 15 feet off the ground, feed for a half hour and leave. And I don't have it happen if I don't have that suit on. Wow. So so I'm a, I'm a believer mm-hmm. that much of it works. You know, how good it is, I don't know. But I don't get busted by turkeys much. I never used that accent or a hex, yeah. hex suit. I, I asked for one for Christmas one year and got one. And, uh, I wore it most all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, that, do, you, do you use the sense a lot? Yeah, good luck. Oh, with yeah. Them? I mean, as far as, yeah, I mean, the, the, the sicker bombs that you have here, I mean, is that we're talking about sicker yeah, bombs and kind of stuff? I mean, yeah, I mean, as far as sense go, yeah. I mean, mm. I've, I've got some I've got some little secrets I like to do too, you know what I mean, with, with the buck bombs, things like that. I'll go around and hit a couple of trees around me so that it soaks into the wood, you know what right. I mean? And it's mm. there, you know, and it's not going away, and I keep it for a couple of days. I've tried some of the drip bags and things mm. like that. <laughs> For the most part, I would say, yeah, I mean, I see it work. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I can't say I don't see it work, the, you know? The thing I try to tell people about sense is it's like any other technique. It just increases your percentage. Yeah. It's it's not a guarantee, oh, smell this, you're going to turn on this. If that stag already has a hind in his scent, he's not going to turn off it for, for, the, for your mm-hmm. sicker right, bomb. Right, The The sense, the calls, everything you're doing, is just increasing your percentages of seeing that. that deer I think it kind of does two things for me, from my perspective. You know, it, it, it kind of shadows some of the smell I might be putting right. off. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's a big thing in, too, in, in a way. You know, yeah. and I think like 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 we're talking about that. I've I've seen before. You know, where it's it has made a big big difference. You know what I'm saying? Now what I do, I, the the little um, sick of bumps, mm-hmm. I'll walk in, and when I get. 100 yards of my stand. That's the same thing I do. I'll just tilt my boots up and spray a little bit on the bottom of my boots and walk thing. the rest of the way in. And, mm-hmm. and I've had some amazing things happen just from doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you know if, you, if you spray it, if you get to your stand and you walk around and you spray everything and then you're fooling around and you get up and you stand, you, you can be too late sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's, I try to do it for the last thing when I, when I get in. I, I know I was talking to my uncle, and that's what they used to do here. He said, you know, they would tie ropes or they would tie like a rag. Yeah, to a lot their of boot, do that. a drag, you know what I mm-hmm. mean? Have one on each one, you know, spray that down with dough urine, spray the other one down with buck piss, and just go, you know what I yeah. mean? I, and I, they will follow. They'll follow, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 see, I'm like Gary. I'll wait till I'm like 50 yards away from the stand to do that, though, because you hear stories of people getting attacked from doing Oh, that. yeah. My I dad mean, my hmm. dad had a good – my dad told me a story in Western Maryland. Year, I'm going years and years ago. He said he was walking away. And he heard behind him something coming up behind him. He turned around. Sure enough, it was a it was a buck. Mm-hmm. He said that son of a gun started putting his head down, stomping his feet. Yep. He said he went and got behind a tree. And he said, "I'll be damned if that son of a gun didn't try to get him." He said it ran him around the tree three or four times and finally took off. Man, yeah. I said, "Why didn't you shoot?" He said, "Cause I dropped my gun when I started running." Mm-hmm. I said, "Oh shit!" <laughs> you got to be careful with that. I mean, when when you spray it on your feet, you've got to be you've got to know you're alone. 
Yeah. And, and that's why that's why I wait till I'm like close to the stand before I even spray it on my feet if if I do. But it, what I normally do with the scents is I'm 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 more picking spots where I know I'm 100 yards from my stand. I'm I'm 150. I'm 50 yards, and I put a nice big old pile just enough to make them stop and stick their nose in it. You don't have to make a noise when they do that. And then you've got your your shot you, already exactly. Raised. So, I got you. Very so, good. You, so 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 they've stopped. They've stuck their nose in the ground. You've got your shot right then. You know it's coming. And you don't have to make any noise to surprise them. And see, the problem with making a noise is it excites them. So it gets that blood pumping. They're they're on alert then. Spook them. They, well, kind of. Well, I mean, yes and no. They but, can jump you. Well, if you're bow hunting. Well, not just that, but if you let's say you, they you don't jump them, but you, you they're walking along and you make the noise, you stop them. They're at high alert. That blood's pumping. The adrenaline's pumping. They're trying to figure out where the sound came from. Right. The meat's not going to taste as good. What, what do you tell people with fish? Same thing. You don't want to stress the fish out before you kill them. Makes the meat taste not as good. Same with deer. Yeah. If you use your scent and you put a big old circle out and you stop them that way instead of making noise at them, it's a much cleaner kill. They're not nearly as spooked. That meat's going to be 10 times better. Hmm. Yeah. When their adrenaline's pumping. That's it. When, when, I mean, that's, when their adrenaline's pumping, they're tight. the meat's tense. It's not going to be nearly as tender. Same with fish. When you kill that fish... You want to be as quick as possible, as painless as possible. Try not to stress that fish so out. So when I'm hunting Saturday, one of the things I need to remember in the back of my mind is don't go back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, an effect, it's an effective tactic. It stops the deer dead in its tracks. It's, it, sometimes you have to. You have to. There's no way around it sometimes. But if, if I have my preference and I know where my lanes are going to be, that's the best way to do it because you're, they're, they're relaxed. They just, they're investigating. They're, wow. Done deal. Well, and another thing, when I talk about spraying some on the bottom of my boots, what that does for me, when I walk in, it allows me to go farther where the wind's going right. to carry it down the trail, and mm-hmm. I'll go 50, 30, 40, 50 yards, and I'll spray a little spot, and then I'll spray one at 30, maybe. I don't, I don't usually get any closer than that, because that's, that's kind of a, th- a thing right. with me. You talked about shooting for 10 yards with a rifle. <laughs> we don't want to talk and, about and you missed the deer because again, your scope's not set for 10 yards you, know, you got a bb gun maybe but but rifles aren't, aren't set for that yeah. and, and the same way with bow if you're shooting a, a compound bow that'll shoot you're comfortable shooting 40 50 yards set your stand back 35 yards mm-hmm. man I, i've been in several stands th- this year a couple of them that they're like 10 15 yards is too close yep you know well, it just reduces it's, your it's too close for your crossbow <laughs> well, yeah, but but I mean, if I was if I was shooting a bow, if I wasn't right. comfortable no, I'm at thirty yards, I wouldn't be shooting a bow, and I know. and I'm not comfortable at thirty yards, but I'm shooting a crossbow. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. It, you don't need to be right on top of the deer. Have you stretched your raven crossbow out yet? Uh, eighty-five yards, I can hit uh, pie plate, like a, a Tupperware dish mm-hmm. or a, a one of those little uh, pint salad things. Five out of five. Wow. That's right. That's about my 10.2, 75, hey, what, 85 what's yards. What's the furthest you shot a deer with that raven? Uh, 65 yards. 65? Yeah, he mm-hmm. went about 20 feet. Wow. Boom. But the only reason I, I had that shot, because it was the only shot I was going to get. Right. And, and uh, I didn't have any other time to hunt. And, and I made, you know, I had a shooting rail. Yeah, I, I don't care. I don't care if you got a, a howitzer. You if you're going to free freehand shoot it, you better have some training and you better practice yeah. a lot. Absolutely. You know, shooting rails is everything. I've got, I have a climber, and, and uh, I, I bought a shooting rail for it. And I, I learned that it's a little more difficult to carry way. through the woods. It's just a little bit heavier, but it's well, well, well worth, worth it. it. Yeah. The trade off is well worth it. Yeah. So. I had a deer last year talking about that, and I got a rail. You know, I had a nice six point six come in there, right? Just for dark. I mean, I could see you had horns that were still legal and everything like that, right? I picked the bow up, and I'm trying to, you know, hold, and it's just. The weight's starting to get to me as I'm trying to hold it up. Not that it's heavy. I'm just, I'm probably going, I don't know, it might have been 25 seconds I was sitting there. You know what I mean? Oh, your adrenaline's pumping. And I'm everything. looking through the scope and I can't see, right? This is what I did. I went like this to look and I couldn't see. And I went, I put the scope back up. I couldn't see nothing because I breathed right on my damn scope, not paying Hold attention in, in, the, in the adrenaline minute. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So then I'm like, all right, all right, man. I got, I only got four minutes here. This has got to happen. I lift the bow up. I look under the bow between the scope and the, and I line the. I know you're not supposed to do stuff like this, but hey, I just you know I'm being honest. I mean I'm I'm pumped up. I'm like, all right, I can see it. It's lined up in a line with this gun. If I go now, I got that. 
Let it go, man. I thought I hit the deer, man, right? I seen it jump up and go. I sat back down. Like, oh, man. Oh, yes. It did. Oh, God. I'm so happy. Here comes Uncle Wayne. Did you get him? I heard you hit him. I heard you hit him. Oh, yeah, man. It whacked him. Hurry up. I can't stand, man. You got to come help me out this tree stand. I'm shaking so bad. Thomas gets me out. We walk over to the tree behind Alan's house. He said, where was he standing at? I said, I'm standing right here, man. I hit him, man. And he goes, you pick the light up, man. There's my arrow sitting in the tree. Yeah, you're going to say, killed you a pine tree. <laughs> ain't, ain't, no, ain't nothing there. He looks at me and he goes, another one got away. Come on. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and and you, were, you were telling us a story earlier about shooting at 10 yards with a rifle. When yeah, you, that was it, a big mistake. I we like tell crossbows. That story. And, and I've had a bunch of different kinds of crossbows. <laughs> but when you, get, when you okay. buy a crossbow, and it's not a rifle, but it, just say a crossbow. When you sight them in, almost all of them you sight at 20 yards and then a farther range, some right. of them 30, 40, whatever uh, yardage. After you get sighted in 20 yards and you get sighted out at, at the distance, the long distance, set a target up in 10 yards and shoot it and watch what happens. You're going to hit about that much higher yep. than where you're shooting. It's the same way with a rifle. you got a rifle and you set it. Rifle's even worse. You get it set at 100 yards (laughs) and and you shoot it at at 40 yards. Mm -hmm. It's good to go. Shoot it at 10, 20 yards, and you're going to miss what you're shooting at. I can tell you what. If you got a rifle or a shotgun, I don't care if that deer 10 yards and you unload it five times and you ain't got him, you might as well hang it off. And that's why I I like rifle with with the rays on it, where you can use your sights inside 30 yards. Because they're just, the scope's here and your rifle's here. and, And it adjusts itself as it goes out. But it doesn't adjust itself in short distance. Right. Exactly. So, like you said, as it's just now, when when it when the bullet actually leaves a barrel of a rifle, it's actually still rising. Right. There's so much energy, it, it and the aerodynamics make it rise. Whereas with a crossbow, I mean, it's it's coming out flat and dropping. Yeah, and it's yeah. no different than changing arrows, changing bullets mm-hmm. does the same oh thing. Oh my god, that's that's the biggest Man, that's, thing. Like I I don't understand when people don't come, they'll come get a dozen arrows or a half dozen arrows. Or something that's eh, close enough. You better re- shoot your bow yeah. back in. Yeah, I have a 270 and rifle, <clears throat> and there's a particular good brand of bullets that I, I took it up and, and sat in a in a regular resting uh, shooting rail, right. whatever you want to call it, resting. And it was from one to six inches high, left, right, everything with these, these bullets. And the ones I'm shooting now, 100 yards, 200 yards, I'm dead on. But this, you know, Different bullets, in the same way with arrows. Different arrows shoot. Absolutely. Different broadheads, everything. The whole works. Yeah, you yeah, got to have the, the exact same know what you're shooting. Don't just go by them and start firing away. I think that's going to wrap it up for us, guys. But you before we go, yep. hold on. I, I, I think we need to – it's Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. We, need, we, need to, we need to talk about gratitude just for a minute Absolutely. before, we, before mm-hmm. we hang up. So from all of us, and I know I speak for all of us when I say this, we are truly grateful oh. – for 100%. all the support you guys have given us this year. We hope you guys are having as much fun with us as we yeah, are. Yeah, and, and, and we love doing this for you guys. Yes. Yeah. I mean, oh, I, it's a blast. I look forward. I mean, this is my I'm, favorite I'm, day looking of the week. F- I'm looking forward to the crabs being done Friday so I can really start getting into the snakehead game a little bit more this winter. And we've already talked about <laughs> it. And uh, I mean, the, we've had a great two years now. We've had two years of tournaments now. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, our, our, our family, let's call it, it's getting big and big and big. I mean, I think on Snakehead Life, we're like coming up on 6,000 or Pretty something like that, it, yeah. you know? Mm. And this is the bottom line. We wouldn't be successful without the support that comes from outside. So from all of us here, we want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. And we just want you to know that we're thankful that you're part of our life. And we're thankful that you're standing with us. And uh, we're going to do everything that we can to continue to help you. You have my word. You guys that have reached out to me know I've done nothing but help. That's what I'll continue to do. I know both these guys will do the absolute same thing. That's what we're here for. Yeah, man. Yeah. One, one last thing, man, before we go. Okay. If you're going Saturday. Oh, make sure you got your orange. Got to have your orange on, Yeah, baby. Don't forget your orange. No matter what it looks like as long as it's orange. <laughs> that's it. Make sure yeah. you got your blaze orange. So, yeah, so orange and it's orange green on an, an orange poncho is sufficient, right? <laughs> you, can, you can wear an orange hat. You if it does so not have a sure. logo on it. If it's got a logo on it. It's not good enough. Really? Yeah. Yep. And the only reason I know that is because I had an orange hat totally that had orange. a Bass Pro Shops emblem right here. Yeah. Have you, have you got an orange go, cap? But he I didn't told realize me. that. Yeah. He told me. I he always said, go vest and hat anyway. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. just what I, I, I always I have a vest. I actually, I have a camo vest that is orange on the inside. So, I, you know, I go, I go flip yep. it around. I'm yeah. vest and but, underwear, bro. Yeah, <laughs> like if you have a if you have a cap, like you've got on where it says snakehead on it. Not enough. Right. 
It was almost, it was, has that emblem on it. That's what happened to count. me. I had, I had an orange, orange Bass Pro Shops, and it, it had a guy told me at Bass Pro it was good enough. I said, mm-hmm. okay. And the warden told me, he said, I got that. Cut you the butt, didn't he? He says, look, he says, uh, <laughs> it's not an acceptable hat. I said, I said well, <clears throat> the guy told me it was. He goes, well, I don't care what anybody tells you. He said, we have a rule book for a reason. He says, I can give you a little bit of trouble if I want to. He says, uh, you got something else with me? And thank God I did. I put orange cap out like you had. He said, well, why don't you put that on your head before I leave? I said, no problem, sir. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get your orange, folks. That, yep. that's safety, 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 safety. Save, safety. save your life and first. save the rest of somebody else's life. Exactly. Exactly right. So, again, from all of us guys, happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next week.